Well, hello and welcome to another video of the series. And in this video, we are basically going to see how to make an API call with the help of a retrofit library. We have seen previously how to do that with uh, Wally library. And from this video onwards, for four to five videos, we'll see how to do that with help of retrofit library. This is the best library in my opinion. And I use this a lot. So without wasting time, let's dive into it. Let me just show you, I have already made the layout for this series and you can find this layout files in my GitHub repository and you can find a link to that repository in the description below. So in the main activity, I have recycler view and a floating action button. And I'm using, uh, I, I've also given an ID to this constraint layout because we are going to use snack bar instead of uh, uh, toast, I think, uh, which is also a new thing, probably if you are following uh, my videos. So uh, another file will be this item view, will, uh, which will have, which will hold the single item of the recycler view. You can see that it has name of the user, email ID, a small edit and delete buttons as well. Another file would be, let's see what we have. Yeah, this submit dialog. We are basically going to use a dialog box uh, to make changes in any user data, which we'll use in late part of this series. So this are uh, basically what I have made and uh, that's it. And I'll, also, in my manifest file, I've given permission of the internet and I've also written this user uses clear text traffic and uh, I, I assigned true to this because uh, I'm using a local server and it doesn't have an SSL certificate. So this line is required if I want to make an API call. And as far as the dependencies for retrofit is concerned, I've already pasted them in my GitHub repository. If you, if you want, you can just copy paste this from there. Or you can also Google for retrofit library Android and you'll find the same dependencies as well. So now without wasting time, let's just get started with uh, our videos. And let me just close all the files. And I'm gonna first of all let, let let's see the response that we are getting in this video we're basically showing the, the 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 user data from the database so I have an API uh, which is here this is the IP address and this is the URL and this is the result of that API and uh, as you can see is a JSON uh, object in which there are two basically two main things first one is the response which is a type of string and second one is data which has the list of smaller json objects this is being the first object and this is being the second object right so we have basically two things a response which is type of string and data which is a list of json objects in one json object so this is our response so according to this we are going to make a model class so let's first do that let's go to android studio let's let me create a new class this will be a data class so select data class and i'll name it user and yes obviously i'll need to add this to the github and data class and uh, uh, in the in the constructor will pass two values one is for response uh, uh, which was type of string and another was data which was a list obviously so list sorry list of type another class which i haven't created yet so basically i'm gonna name that class user data and uh, let's just create that uh, user data class inside the body of this 
uh, user class. So another data class, uh, which will be user data. And inside the constructor of page, we'll pass, uh, we'll have an ID of type string. We'll have a uh, name of type string. We'll have an email of type string and make sure you write uh, you spell the words correctly uh, the same as you have in your database or uh, your JSON response and well password will be of type string as well so now that we have a model class now we'll focus on uh, uh, you know in, uh, making a director of it instance to use that in our uh, different files of our application to call the APIs. So let's create another class for that. I'm gonna name it retrofit client. That will be just an armor class. Retrofit client. And inside of it, we'll, I'll take uh, basically a variable, a uh, retrofit client equals to uh retrofit dot builder dot add converter factory and we'll have json converter factory dot create then we'll have add base url by the way we don't have base url yet so instead of hard coding it here i'm gonna take another a uh, class for that which will be uh, an object class and I'm, I'm gonna name it constants and here const well base underscore url and I'm just gonna pay, uh, copy paste this url from this browser until here so and don't forget that slash at the end go back to retrofit client and uh write base url here and you might need to import this and then just call dot build method now i'm gonna take another variable so well api equals to um you can uh, by the way name anything you want right and I'm going to use this retrofit client instance and I'm going to call dot create method. And now in create method, we are going to pass another class, which will create not a class, basically an interface. This interface will have all the endpoints of our URL. So let's just create that and uh, new. Uh, it will be an interface and I'm just going to name it API and here uh, for first thing uh, that we are going to do in this uh, particular this video is that we are going to fetch the list of user so this will have a get method uh, so let me use get and notation and in the parenthesis what I'm going to pass is uh, the, the endpoint of the URL. So basically, uh, if you can see here in the URL, we have this part as a base URL, and remaining part, uh, getusers.php, will go as an endpoint here. Now we can create a function called getusers to fetch the users from that API endpoint. Users and this will uh, return a call of type uh, uh, user that we just created and you might need to import this call as well which will have you just you just need to import this a record of it to call and that's it we don't need to do anything else in this interface now go back to the record of it client and you need to pass this api interface here so API double colon class dot Java. So that's it. We don't need to do anything else to make the uh, instance of the retrofit client.
now we have everything that we need to make the api call so we can now go to main activity.kt first of all we'll need some variables to call so late init var rcv we have recycler view so recycle rcv of type recycler view uh, which will be private then private late init var we have floating action button then we have uh, we have given an id to the constraint layout as well so constraint layout of type okay i forgot latin it var here so latin it var constraint layout of type constraint layout that they're gonna have a list of users so let's create uh, an array list of type array list uh, equals to okay uh, this will be have type of user dot user data and why is not giving me any suggestion again i forgot to call where here so yeah we'll initialize the array list here itself then we are going to have uh, another class for recycle view adapter as well so let's take a variable for that as well so private var rcv adapter of type rcv adapter we still don't have this class so let's create rcv adapter class rcv adapter add go back to main activity and we'll pass this array list here itself Mm, let me just rename it and we need to have this array list. we need to cast that array list here uh, in the constructor array list of that array list which will have user dot user data type and that's it rcv adapter okay we don't need to do that here actually we need to initialize here and we need to pass this array list here so i don't think we need to do anything else let's just uh, initialize all the views so i'm gonna create another method for it init views let's create this function and inside which i'll uh, initialize recycler view so rcv equals to find view by id r dot id dot rcv fab equals to find view by id r dot id dot fab and what else we have constraint layout constraint layout equals to find view by id r dot id dot constraint layout and that's it we don't have anything to initialize now and one more thing is uh, which is left here is private late in it var retrofit client of type retrofit client and we need to initialize that as well but we are going to initialize that in on create function so retrofit client equals to retrofit client and now we can uh, call the apis i'm gonna make another function for that get users and here first of all i'll create a clear the array list so i'm gonna call array list dot clear function so this what this will do is that it will prevent uh duplicating the values when you are running uh you are you know you are going back and forth from activities between activities so it will prevent uh the duplicating displaying duplicate values when you are making the same api calls again and again so now we we'll need to make uh, a variable of type call uh, call uh, which was type user equals to api uh, sorry uh, retrofit client 
dot api dot get users now we'll use this call and we'll call enqmatter on this and in here we will need to make an anonymous object so let's do that object and we'll need to call a callback of type uh, user because we are getting the response in the, uh, the format of user class and here uh, we'll need to implement a couple of functions on response and on failing so uh, first of all let's handle on failure i'm just going to log uh sorry log d on failure and here i'm just going to print uh, t dot message and i'm just going to make tag inside this double quotation uh so now on response we need to check for a condition so the response the first element element of the response was that string which says success so we need to check on that so if response dot body uh, we, we need to call for an null check here so response dot body dot response uh, if that is equals to success then go forward and look through the data that we are getting so for i in uh, response dot body and here we can uh, we, we are sure that response body is not uh, a blank because the, the response is success right so response dot body dot data and we can pass this i inside our array list so array list dot add i now outside this for loop we can call rcb dot adapter equals to rcb adapter and one more thing which is important is uh, remaining is that okay what's this Uh, type mismatch required okay well we actually haven't uh, done uh, so much thing uh, much things in our CV adapter class so that's why this is giving us an error but don't worry it will go away uh, yeah what I was uh, saying is that we still need to uh, call RCV dot apply and we need to uh, create a linear layout manager for our recycler view so and set that to our recycler view so uh, rcv dot apply layout manager equals to linear layout manager and we can pass this at main activity as context now go back to our rcv adapter as we need to remove this error go back to that and rcv adapter class will basically extend from recycler view dot adapter and we need to pass uh, an inner class here uh, as a type uh, so let's create inner class which uh, which will have name my view holder sorry holder and it will have an item view as an argument we of type view and we'll basically i'm sorry we'll basically need to import this view and it will extend from recycler view dot view holder and it will have this item view as a parameter so now we can pass uh, the rcb adapter dot my view holder okay something's wrong here okay i'm making a mistake actually we have to make this uh extend call at the end of this constructor so now we can pass my view holder here so that was my bad and uh, don't forget to add this parenthesis to make it a constructor call so now as you can see it is giving us an error 
So as usual, you you should know how to build the recycler view adapter by now. As you are uh, as you are watching this video, if you if you're not sure what we are doing here, you can watch my recycler view video. I'm gonna put a link to that in the description. So by the way, let's now import uh, the mem uh, implement this member functions. So as usual, we are going to return my view holder uh, with layout inflator dot from parent dot context dot inflate r dot layout and we have five item view the second parameter will be parent and false the get item count will have array list dot size and on bind view holder we will uh, basically have a variable first of all uh, which will have item one item from list at a time uh, so array list and we can pass this position term in our variable here now uh, before moving forward let's take a variable for each of the fields from item view so we have name name text equals to item view dot find uh, view by id of type uh, actually we have i have used material text view so pass that as uh, the type parameter and r dot id dot sorry id dot uh, name item name then same way we'll have email email text equals to i'm just going to copy paste this whole line because i don't want to repeat everything so item email then obviously we have two uh image views as well image view um underscore edit image view let's let's just write edit image equals to uh, let me just copy instead of material text view uh use image view image view and i change it to edit item edit and i'm just gonna copy paste this uh delete image and item delete so now we can use these variables here so holder dot apply name text dot text equals to item list dot name and email text dot text equals to item list dot email so i don't think we need to do anything else here we'll use these variables in the next video where we'll start inserting and updating uh the values of the user so let's run our application and see if this is working or not so as you can see our data from the database is showing up on our application First user is create developer since this is the email ID and second is debug. This is his email ID, by the way, this is not uh, the real email ID of this person, obviously. So yeah. So this is how you use retrofit library to make an API call and you can fetch the uh, user from the database and you can parse uh, the JSON object using retrofit library. You have to create retrofit instance, you have to create model for the response, and you have to create an interface to uh, the endpoint of the URLs where you call uh, that endpoint to make uh, the, the API call to that endpoint. So basically, this is all three things that you need to care about. So in next video, uh, we'll see how we can insert data into database using wally library so that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next video